All right, we are here at my tiny DIY worm bin and the lid is looking pretty dry. So a little bit more on that later, but we're gonna get a quick census of the mite population. We're gonna check on that burlap sack that we had some strawberries and lettuce in. And we're also going to check on that last feeding and give another kind of big feeding. And right here, just about six hours ago, I put in this little piece of bread and you can see, I think some tiny mites walking all over it. And what I did was periodically every hour I took a picture and then I took a little bit of video and I'll try and link some of those together and do a little bit of a time lapse there. But the reason I did that is because I checked in on this and I could see little mites just kind of glistening. And I think there are probably a ton of them right here. Oh my gosh, check that out. Look at that. Let's just do a time lapse of that. All right, now I'm not gonna leave those in the bin. I'm just gonna put them in a bucket to the side here. And right here, I may have had a little time lapse going over here, but they are already starting to break down that bread really well. So I'm gonna grab those and take those out. And that's a few layers down. I'm just gonna take this out and I will sort through any kind of castings or worms, but let's, let's grab a bunch of this. So kind of what this tells me is if you are gonna bait out mites, then you should really do it on a short term basis. You just put that stuff in there and a few hours later, maybe take it out. It's not like something you need to put in for multiple days. Cause like I said, this was only six hours ago that I put that in. So let's grab this out. And I think, you know what? I'm just gonna keep going here, might as well. All right, so one of the things that I learned about mites when I did my various bins is that if you try and bait out the mites, you can end up trying to drain the ocean one thimble at a time. They are just thousands upon thousands upon thousands of mites in a worm bin. And when they get out of balance, when you get a kind of a a peak of mites, what ends up happening is the population explodes, but then it goes back down after a little while. And here's just some of the various things like this banana that they're desperately searching for food because I think the worms are taking care of business on the feedings I'm given because I'm going a little bit lighter on the feedings. But there's worms right away in here and I don't see like mites all over the worms trying to eat the worms. So I'm not worried about these being the types of mites that will eat the worms or attack them, that kind of thing. I think those are pretty rare. And there is enough bedding and food for everybody. You really don't need to worry too much about mites. Again, to me, they're just an indicator that something's different in your bin. And I'm kind of going through a cycle with this bin right now. And here's that burlap sack. And with that burlap sack, last time we put in some strawberries and we put in a little bit of lettuce. And last time there were a lot of mites and I think just a couple potworms on it but this seems to have very little of that right now. And in fact, I'm gonna try and show you inside that whatever food was in there is no longer in there. And I do see some worms, but there are some castings in there. So this thing is actually probably going to take a long time. A couple of the commenters suggested that, you know, burlap is used to put on top of a worm bin and maybe this is gonna take a while and I'm tending to believe them. And I'm just gonna take it out momentarily so I have more room in the bin. So let's keep digging in through the feeding zone. And I, as I recall, I think it was just a little bit of lettuce and I'd spread it out and I'd ripped up some of the other bracelet packaging. So don't expect to find too much of it. Now, as I'm going through here, the bin feels just a little bit drier than it has in the past. And that is because we've been in the 40s and 50s at night and the heater has kicked on. So that has dried up some of the indoor air. So whereas we were in the 50s and 60% humidity around here inside, now we are closer to 40s like it is in the summer as far as the humidity goes. And in here, here's some of the different experiments we've done. We did some drink tray packaging and the worms seem to break that down. And in here, I'm not finding any worm balls, but certainly we are finding big, healthy worms all throughout. This bin right now is 69 days old. So 69 days since we started it, and seven days since we fed it last. 
So they are definitely due for a feeding based on how little I fed them last time. And over those 69 days, we fed them nine times. In fact, I think a couple feedings ago or a couple check-ins ago, we skipped feeding because we had a lot of pot worms and I just had an overfeeding situation and I might've been getting a little bit of fermentation. But in general, the bin critters that you get aren't real harmful. To me, they're just more an indicator of what's going on. So it's just a little bit of population boost of the mites. And again, I think this bin is cycling. I'm gonna dig all the way to the bottom and see what we have going on here. And the bottom's looking good. It's just glistening a little. No pooling of water, so that's good. Some of the material does feel a little matted down or clumpy or more moist down below, and that makes sense since the air in the house is drying out a bit. But you know, everywhere I go, just tons of fat, happy worms and then a coffee bean made it in. And if anybody's wondering about coffee and using it as grit, this is a coffee bean and I can just mush it around. So coffee, once it gets in here and gets moist, it, it's no longer kind of a solid form. All right, this right here is kind of why I aerate things out. Just kind of stuck to, oh my gosh, look at that worm. <laughs> I'm not really helping here. I'm destroying their house and I'm trying to say why I aerate things because I don't like things to get matted down, but the worms certainly have enjoyed being in here. So I guess just ignore what I was about to say. But these are some happy, healthy worms, or unhappy because I'm messing with them. Let's get this front area and then we'll go ahead and start the feeding. As I dig down here again, same thing. I feel the moisture deeper, which makes sense because gravity helps pull, pull the moisture down below. And lots of worms all the way up and down this little avalanche of bedding that I have here. There is a lot of good bedding in here and that's because we piled in some bedding when the moisture level got too high. So I don't think I need to add a whole bunch of bedding in here. In fact, I may add some of that spun bedding or blended egg carton type material in here as bedding. And I'll put a link to the video where I did that in my vermi hut, I think is where I put that in. This bin is looking great. It's really, really looking good with all the worms all throughout. And we started with about 500, so I guesstimate there's probably somewhere between, I don't know, six and 700 in here right now. Certainly you can't get a good guesstimate because there weren't any worm balls, but we're gonna put a central feeding zone in here. And this time I'm actually gonna try and remember to put some of that bedding that I'd taken out and put the burlap sack down first. So let's go ahead and set that up. All right, so here's some of that drink tray material that I blended and it's just kind of a soft wooly spun type of bedding. I'm going to use that. In fact, if you want to, you can hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified when I release videos on my other bins. I've got a vermi hut and outdoor worm bin and I do different experiments in there. And a lot of times they relate to the current video that I'm doing. And one of the things I want to talk about was the difference between maybe having a really small bin and having a bigger bin like a vermi hut or an outdoor worm bin. When you have a bin like this smaller worm bin, sometimes what can happen is a little bit of too much food or a little bit of a critter population explosion can have outsized effects on a small bin because there's just not a lot of places for the worms to go to. And sometimes those parameters can take over the rest of the bin. So smaller bins are a little bit less forgiving, a little bit harder for a beginner that maybe isn't used to seeing what's going on in a bin. I'm gonna do an upcoming video where I talk about what I think are good bins for beginners or for different budgets, that kind of thing. So I'll be looking for that coming up. And here's what we are going to feed. This is, again, just like last feeding, mostly lettuce, which has a lot of water, so that's actually good for kind of what we've been seeing as far as humidity in the house. But also some carrots from my garden. Sometimes I'm not good at knowing which carrots are <laughs> ready to go yet, and I'll pick a small one. The worms really go through carrots, pretty amazing. But mostly it's this lettuce food. I'm trying to stay away from the fruits a little bit just to try and contain some of the critters and lessen their population. And that's really worked out for the pot worms because I don't see any. So let's go ahead and take some of this and put it into our burlap sack. In fact, I'm gonna try and stuff it a lot more than we did last time. So we'll put some of this leafy material. There's some kale in here, some tops to the carrots. We'll, pat, we'll put some of the carrots in there, some red chard, just a bunch of fun stuff to have in here. And that will also probably help with the moisture level of this burlap sack because to me it feels a little bit dry. And I just don't see a whole lot of um, breakdown. So this might be a long-term experiment. You might be revisiting this a lot of times if you come back and check out my videos. 
So we'll put that down there. Even though this looks like a huge piece, it's mostly water and air because it's just a, a lettuce stalk. And that is actually a very fast food. So not fast food like you would think going out and getting some unhealthy food at Burger King or McDonald's, but food that goes by fast and that the worms can eat fast. So I'm gonna continue to kind of spread out the feeding as we go here. And then I'm gonna add our coffee, which again is just another nitrogen source for them and food source for them. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. It's just another different kind of food for them. And it comes with its own microbes. I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of a lighter shade. And that's because there's a lot of molds and fungus that grows in my coffee bin as I wait to use it in my worm bins. And then we'll do our grit, which is just pulverized eggshell. And then I'm just gonna kind of mix that around a little bit. And I think I'll top it off with some more of that wooly bedding. And that will probably do for the amount of bedding that I'm gonna give them. Now, I always like to bury my food and this piece in particular is kind of sticking out. I always like to bury the food because I don't want any insects that fly or leave larvae in here. And I have some screens on the lid, that kind of thing. And the other thing is if I bury it, then the worms have basically a 360 way to get at the food instead of having to come at it just from the top. And then I leave that newspaper on top and that is basically just another level of capture for any kind of moisture that might rise up. Maybe it'll land on that newspaper and then fall back down on the bedding itself. But I think one more thing I'm gonna do here is take this liquid that's in here and just kind of spread it over the newspaper and it can absorb into the material. But I hope everybody is having a great day and happy vermicompost everybody. Take care now.